SIT, Spirituality 90, is a half-day retreat designed exclusively for self-development of IT professionals. This monthly retreats organized at Brahma Kumari's Shanti Sarovar campus at Gachipoli, Hyderabad has now completed seven years of successful journey. With beautiful combination of talks, workshops, cultural presentations, and creative activities by expert resource persons, these SIT retreats have benefited numerous IT professionals in their personal and professional lives. In the past year, retreats were conducted on the topics like Ditch the Busyness Breaking Our Own Limits Managing Your Inner Net Secrets of Self-Esteem Life Reboot Dealing with Injustice Revert from Resentment Oxygen for the Soul Effective Communication Broken Trust – How to Mend it How to Tame Your Inner Critical Voice Overall, about 7,000 members took benefit in the past 7 years. We are sure, with your active participation and good wishes, these SIT retreats will flourish and will be benefiting more and more IT professionals. My name is Nigda and I'm working for Deloitte from the last two years here in Hyderabad. Uh, in my personal view, uh, spirituality is got to do more from a lifestyle change and why because amongst all the daily hustle bustles that we all go through in life it's important that we always take a step back disconnect from this world disconnect from our day-to-day -day course reconnect rejuvenate with ourselves and really understand what our purpose of life is and where do we stand in this entire picture the big picture of this world and how do we really contribute ourselves to be more effective to have some of these questions answers and more from an introspective it's important that we attend such personal development related programs and one such being the spirituality in IT retreat here in Brahma Kumaris these are very personal related topics that one can come easily relate to in our day-to-day -day life so be it conflict resolution be it on emotional intelligence be it on building trust how do we you know sustain ourselves um, all these topics are something that one can completely relate to and hence we can actually go back and apply both in our personal and in our professional space because this is one of the challenges that as an IT professional or be it any other professional or from any other background for that matter you know, it becomes very challenging to strike that balance and hence it is important that we need to take that time out, attend such programs and reconnect, rejuvenate ourselves so that we really understand what our purpose on life, or what our purpose is and how do we deliver the same with great uh, and with a, with a peaceful and a positive attitude. My name is Lakshay. I'm a senior software engineer with Microsoft. I have been attending SITs for more than one and a half years now. I also try ensure that I attend the Saturday monthly retreats. How they have helped me? Basically, uh, I'm able to do my job much more peacefully with much lesser stress. As we all know, nowadays, software jobs are quite stressed, quite stressful. So I'm able to do my job much peacefully. I was introduced to this by a friend of mine while uh, before I started this, I was in a lot of stress at my job, not able to cope up with the stress, not able to do my job well. After I was introduced to it, I was able to change my job. I changed my company as well. And the role is also better. And during meditations, sometimes I am able to solve the problems which I am stuck for weeks. 15 to 20 minutes of meditation helps me a lot. I'm Rakesh Patel and I work for ADP as a business analyst. In an age where we are stressed, we are anxious and chaos has taken place in our day-to-day -day life, uh, I don't think that anything gives us a better gateway than spirituality itself. Um, in an age where our society has been centric to 
uh, competition, the rat race that we've been a part of since such a long time. Um, I feel we don't have any time for ourselves as well. In all this uh, conundrum, I feel that spirituality shows us a way to connect with ourselves and to understand what we really are and what the bigger purpose is. A customized programs such as the spirituality in IT retreats and sessions are specifically made for people who are working in information technology in this industry that has gotten up uh, to the pinnacle of stress. Uh, we take time out and understand what our bigger purpose is, not on a run to a mill basis and we find what we could connect to and we get ample time to connect with ourselves hence minimizing the prospect of stress in our lives so i feel that spirituality has uh, given us the prospect uh, inclusion of spirituality in our lives could um, actually show us a way where we could feel that um, our role is much more than what we are playing right now So this is the, uh, what we have shown you, the glimpses of uh, the report of SIT, what has been done in several years, seven years of journey and uh, the learning from the people who have benefited from that one. So I request each one of you to taste these things uh, in the future. And uh, before we proceed, I would like to tell you that uh, the, uh, the material that is left on the table for each one of you is also holding a pad and a pen and uh, a couple of other literature that what will, uh, will you to go through that one. So please use that one as you need. And uh, here I will, uh, before we proceed with uh, Sister Aruna, I would like to invite uh, Mr. Raghu Godupalli from Infosys. He is uh, the one who is associated with this uh, initiative for quite some time. And uh, we request him to share his experience uh, with all of you. Mr. Raghu is a, a DC head for Infosys Limited. DC stands for Development Center. Uh, he is the head of Development Center of Infosys Hyderabad Gachiboli branch and is also an AVP of uh, Oracle Practice. Request uh, Mr. Raghu to please come forward. Thank you. you know, I just uh, came into this facility for the first time. I missed the inauguration. I was traveling uh, at that time, but it's what an amazing facility it is completely world-class uh, and just you step into this facility and uh, you know your mind gets transformed you become so peaceful <laughs> so there's a old chinese proverb which says a good neighbor neighbor is a priceless treasure and we're so fortunate to have not only a good neighbor but a great neighbor um, <clears throat> we've been associated with uh, this organization for a, quite some time uh, very closely. Um, you know, I was just thinking, um, we emphasis we have multiple development centers across uh, India and across the world. And in India, we have about nine or ten large centers like this. And um, we have a very healthy competition amongst the DCs. And each of the DCs gets assessed at a yearly basis um, on various parameters. And this particular center um, won the best DC award uh, eight times in the last nine years. And I, be, I have a strong belief that a lot of, uh, some of the credit at least, uh, needs to go to this organization uh, because a lot of work that we work, <laughs> there's a, a lot of vibrations from here, all the good work that comes from here, you know, it gets transferred to our, across the wall and, you know, encourages us and inspires us to do great things. Um, <clears throat> so we have um, uh, a group called Antarman in the DC. Um, this is a yoga and a meditation club. So all the employees form uh, self-interest groups uh, depending on their specific interests. Some focus on sports, some focus on um, cultural aspects. But uh, this particular club is exclusive for yoga and meditation, which we call Antarman. Uh, Brother uh, Brijesh is here who spearheads that organization, uh, that uh, club within the, the DC. Um, and we've done some very path-breaking work. Um, uh, you know, we've been able to work with a number of infusions, uh, bring them into this path of uh, yoga and meditation. Um, you know, 
uh, we've done, uh, we continue to do weekly sessions, not just weekly sessions. We uh, reach out to, uh, we go to where the employees are in their specific center, specific floors, and do, uh, uh, you know, quick yeah, sessions around yoga and meditation just to get them into this whole path. And, and that brings them, uh, you know, and, uh, into this, uh, uh, you know, into this practice of yoga and meditation, and we see the numbers uh, growing steadily across the years. Uh, and we're doing some very, very innovative things. And this is something that we've done, um, uh, you know, a very uh, unique way, and something not replicated in any, any, at least in the development centers. And, and some of you coming in from other IT companies, I strongly urge you to start looking at creating such kind of clubs because we have seen employees who have actively contributed to this uh, or work uh, being part of this kind of initiatives have also increased their productivity and you know helps in the larger cause of organization um, but I, again thank you so uh, thank you for uh, in fact the spirituality in it this whole initiative the genesis of this initiative um, was uh, started off when a group of Infocians came together and said, hey, we've got to do something. Uh, being in the IT industry, let's start, come together and work. And that's where it started off. And uh, today it's such a large initiative celebrating its uh, seventh anniversary. Uh, congratulations to all the uh, stakeholders and the, and the group that has been uh, working uh, tirelessly in, in, in growing this whole initiative and working to the larger cause of um, the IT community in Hyderabad. Uh, but again, once again, thank you so much for inviting me here. It's such a great blessing to be a part of these programs and uh, and uh, you know uh, and uh, you know and, and take uh, uh, you know benefit from uh, the good work that uh, is being done in such initiatives. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Drago, for such uh, enlightening words. And it's really good to listen from the people who are in practice. Okay, we always think that uh, the people who are with the white dress can tell something. But what about we people who are in the middle of uh, the things, you know, where you need to face different situations every day, morning to evening. So, so the words coming from the people who are practicing makes all the difference. That's the reason why actually it makes a lot of difference to us. Thank you. And um, I request uh, Sister Aruna Ben to come on to the stage. And uh, then we will uh, proceed with uh, the question and answer session. And uh, I also request you to uh, look at the feedback form given in the folders uh, given to you people. So it will be definitely valuable for us. That, but in the real life, there is no wrong question. So, so please feel free to ask any question that comes to your mind. And uh, I'm a beginner to this uh, meditation concept. Uh, in fact, a couple of times tried earlier. But the challenge what I faced is, uh, you know, how to address wandering of mind you know, how to control. So uh, there actually I gave it up. Uh, I don't think I can do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me begin by saying that we were all at that point where we felt that, you know, as the brother said, we were all at that point on that side of the fence where we didn't know what to do, how to do it. And then we started and I think the, one of the things you have to look at is the benefits. When you start seeing the benefit in doing something, then you want to do more of it. That's the first thing I want to say. And then to address the wandering of the mind, you see? So th this is why when we sit to meditate, you have to have one focal point. Normally we keep this kind of picture. So the eyes are resting on the center of that dot. So the eyes have something to rest on, right? So you're not like where to look, what to do. And at home you can focus on a flower or a candle flame or something. Then you have to rest your mind on something. So for that, then you have to create one thought. You have to say, okay, what is it that I want to experience? by the end of this meditation. So normally we ask you to pick on one of the qualities. Let's begin with peace, that's the generic. So I say, okay, I want to experience peace. I want to experience peace around me. So then I just even, just even thinking about the word peace, 
it starts to have a feeling. So what have you done? You have now focused on this one word. And by focusing on that, your mind has automatically moved away from all other things. So it's not that you have to push away everything out of your mind. No, you have to put the light, the spotlight on that one thing. And then you start thinking, what is peace? What kind of peace do I want? Because there's also peace after a war. That's not the kind of peace I want. There's peace of nature. You know, you go to some greenery, or a nice place, the beach or something, and there's peace. That's still not enough. So which peace? Peace, inner peace. I want to be absolutely at peace. What does that peace look like? That peace looks like contentment. That peace looks like satisfaction. That peace looks like self-control. So what are you doing now? You're exploring this word and what it means to you. In other words, you kind of zoom in on that word. Then after some time, you will begin to be it. When you really have kind of explored it, you start to feel it. And in that moment, that, that thought of peace will feel like elongated. Where you're just in it. And that's when, you know, you're not, you are thinking, but you're in that one thought. So people think in meditation you have to stop your thinking. You don't stop, you can't stop your thinking. But you're just in that experience. You know, for example, when you're really happy, when you're really happy, you're not thinking. You're just in it, you're just in the joy of that or say the joy of success, victory over something, then again you're just in that, you're not thinking. So I would suggest you choose a quality, zoom in on that, and automatically your mind will, you know, start focusing on that. Try these steps first, then actually there's a lot more to explore, because we don't do this all the time now, we explore other things. So with time you get more creative with your meditation and different stages of meditation. In fact, what we are trying to achieve is to be absolutely up there with God in just full attention, full concentration, as long as possible. But for now I would suggest that you just begin with focusing on these good things. Is that okay? a brother there and then a brother here so, so my question is in this uh, world of meditation and trying to be at peace with yourself is there something where you can measure your progress is that is it possible and how do you if it is true how do you measure that progress mm. how do you recalibrate yourself is what I'm trying to understand mm. Well, I think life <laughs> is a measure. Like the tests that come from outside will be measuring your progress because each time you get better at handling the stress. Yeah, So I think, yeah, you get better at handling what's happening and your reactions to the to life and events. And that's when you know that this is working. In fact, one of our Kuwaiti students, she went to Madhuban, Mount Abu, our headquarters, and she had a meeting with Dadi Janki. And she said, Dadi, I'm not sure that my yoga is working. My meditation is working. So Dadi said, if you look at your life over the last six months, do you experience any change? And she said, yeah, lots. So then Dadi said, well, your yoga is working. So, you know, we shouldn't be looking for thunder and lightning in our meditation, but 
it's a slow, you know, slow drip effect. And then you gradually see how things are changing for the better. Yeah. Yes, this brother was next. Yeah, okay, sorry. Okay, yeah. Sister, I've been practicing since long and I have a lot of years of experience in the industry also. And when I go to the office, I go, I think I've gone, in fact, I think my mind is a placid lake. And the real conflict is when the stones are thrown in this placid lake. And like you said, we try to uphold all those peace to control the situations. And by the end of the day, in this kind of a control and facing a lot of different remarks, different situations, I do feel that with all that we are stressed and we come back. This is industry. And I realize that we can change. As a person, we can change. But we live in an industry where there's a lot of pressure and we can take it, but we are definitely trying to, in, like you said, in trying to uphold, we are controlling ourselves. We are controlling a lot of the, the five piece that you said, that so that we uphold and then see that we are having the resolve to move forward. We are having the resolve to resolve we are trying to keep the company in a good position and so on. So we are in at conflict every day as we go to office. The only way finally I realize is when you retire. Mine is not a question, but I want your observations. See, what if you what if you dropped the pressure? What if you dropped the expectation? And you say to yourself, I'm going to go in and do the best that I can. And again, this is, you know, proven um, research that when you're trying to force something to happen, it most likely doesn't happen. Because there's an element of force or, as you said, pressure. But if you just are the being full of, full of these virtues and you go in and you give your best, right, you will actually kick into effect some ripple effects. So those qualities, your energy is actually doing the work. And you don't have to feel like, I have to literally get my hands and feet dirty into making it happen. Because we work a lot here on making or trying to make things happen with our thought and our vibration. And I mean that, this is not something psychic, it's, you know, a simple example I'll give you, like, when I'm going out, I say, okay, Wherever I go, there's a parking spot waiting for me. Really, even before I set out, I say, as, a, as I'm warming up the car, I say, okay. Especially where I know it's going to be difficult. Generally, okay. So I say, okay, there's a parking spot waiting for me. So I'm already giving it that energy. And I'm telling the universe, my time is precious. You know, make it happen. And really, 99% of the times, I go and something's there, someone's pulling out, isn't it? So what did I do? I envisioned it, I put my thought energy, and I made it happen. I didn't literally physically go there and argue for a position or a place. So this is the thing, this is the level at which we want you to operate. You know, in the past, people used to walk. 
then they used to use the bell gadi, then maybe the bicycle, then the car, and now flights. So why don't we use the power of thought? Why do we have to run the rat race? You know, why do we have to run from here to there, literally, physically? Technology, science is telling us, you know, make a phone call, look on Google God and find out what's there, how much it is. Like, you know, we don't literally have to physically exert so much energy. So let's try to use the mind and the thought to make things happen. Inspire people, you know, touch people. Even in our meditation, actually, maybe that's where the Infosys brother is <laughs> picking up on our, our thought vibration. So we are, you know, many neighborhoods. I know when I was in Canada, uh, in London, in Kuwait, you know, these neighborhoods, when we go there, it's not so maybe tidy or there's an old building or... But as we start living and operating, the neighborhood starts to change for the better. It's like new buildings come up and the you know, government puts some nice trees and nice layout and... It's the vibrations, you see? And the last thing I want to say is, uh, you can choose, you see, you can choose to give your power away or you say, you know what, I'm here, it's a job, but my peace and sanity is much more important. People spend so much time at work to earn the pennies, which they will only spend giving to the doctor later. So earn what you can, as peacefully as you can, and then enjoy, be stress-free. See, be stress-free, reduce the stress. You can do everything you want, but just reduce the stress, reduce the, the tension. Then you'll find that you actually are, you know, better at what you do. I'm not speaking, these are all our experiences. I think some of you know Dadi Janki. She's the head of the organization, the Brahma Kumari. She's 103 years old. And I've had the good fortune of knowing her for the last 40 years. And she is the best leader. And I worked very closely with her for eight years. I used to live in that same house and do a lot of that communication correspondence. And she's, she is, she's a great boss, she's a great CEO, like without the stress and the tension, but managing and very sometimes difficult situations. At least you guys have technical hardware to deal with. We have human personalities to deal with and their lives, you know, making decisions for their lives. People come with a lot of problems. If we say something, you know, they take us literally. So we are very responsible for their lives. So what I'm saying is we have to be very careful. Are we saying the right thing? Will they understand us? You know? But Dadi really handles everything and everyone so well without feeling the stress or the tension. Many centers opening. Where does the money come from? You know? Look at this place, you know, one can get a headache thinking, how are we going to run this place? But it's not our, our job, it's God's job. He will find a way. I've lived in so many centers and, you know, sometimes you don't know what's coming in the box. But by the end of the month, there's always enough to pay the rent or to pay the expenses. I can't get stressed, I can't get tense, it's his job and I'm just instrument. I didn't ask for this when I came, I came to meditate. I didn't come to manage or administer or anything. But okay, we are playing the role of running the centers, but at the same time, we have the faith, it's his job. 
So we keep ourselves very calm and cool and trust. Okay, brother. Yeah. Hi, sister. Uh, it's exactly one year uh, I did my Raj Yoga in this center. And I've been practicing now and then, but since last couple of months, it's been regular. And I have tremendous experiences and with what the experience, how can you feel it? And with respect to what you just said about the parking, and I have such similar experiences as well. But uh, as I apply this, the, the con soul consciousness of spreading the vibrations, right? I'm seeing the, the, the I'm experiencing the, the benefit, the things happening the way I wanted to, but especially uh, in our roles, we manage people, right? And it works many times. Sometimes I have to give some time. I don't know, but especially when I deal with people, I am conscious enough I spread the right vibrations in my talks. And the other person may not be the conscious, right? And to the example what you have stated, right? Repeated mistakes, like coming late, kind of thing, right? Repeated, repeated. I'll be conscious enough to respond, not to react. Now, at time, I mean, I have to wait for so long. Uh, again, uh, the interesting quote what I have seen on the screen, God's love is so powerful, he makes things easy. But it has, it has to take some time. But at some times, I, I, keep, question, I keep getting the questions like, uh, how, how, how can I handle things differently? Mm. Right? When I'm dealing with the people who doesn't understand the consciousness. Or because not everyone will be in this with the same frequencies or vibrations. The conflict of understanding, conflict of uh, uh, reception. And also, your question is how long is patience? <laughs> kind of. <laughs> like how long? <laughs> how long should you be patient, right? So it, because we are, I'm in the, the mode of practicing, I'm able to rejuvenate the patience. But if I give his heart, I lose my patience. See, okay, one thing I think needs to be made clear here that if you are in a position of authority, then of course you have to play your role, right? Which is to be assertive. So if somebody's not doing their job, you have to in a way reprimand them and say, look, come on, this is not working or it has to be better or, you know. Or same with the parent, right? The parent has to tell the child, look, in fact, the love is the law. The law is the love, you see? So not to think, oh, I have to love my children so they can do everything they want. That is not right. Because you are a responsible adult for your child and you have to guide them. Okay, so in the same way, if you are leaders, then yes, you have to. There's a certain expectation of these employees and they're hired for that. And at least the good thing in your organizations you can hire and fire we cannot hire and we don't fire right in the brahma kumaris nobody's hired and nobody's fired if they're there they're there for life okay so i think yeah one is yeah it's definitely a, a test for your patience okay and at the same time while it's testing your patience it's also honing your other powers I think if you look carefully, you'll see that you're the one that has to learn the lesson. And when you've learned that lesson, then you'll get another test. That test will be over. This is really also my experience, right? So maybe I'm tested for patience. But then when I'm really, you know, with my true heart, being patient with that person, then the dynamic changes. Somehow they learn, they come to me, or they go away, or some dynamic changes where I don't have to deal with that anymore. And then something else comes along. So I think you also have to trust that, yes, this is for a short time. Let me learn the lesson. And things never change. Things never stay the same forever. And so always to know that, you know, I'm doing the right thing right now. But yes, if you have to tell them this is not right, you should, you should play the role and say, look, see there is aggressive and there's passive and then there's assertive. Don't be aggressive. Aggressive is when you're being rude and disrespectful. 
Passive is when you don't say anything. Assertive is you respect yourself and you respect them. So you respect, you, you, you know, you're being given this role as well to run this company or run the department or whatever. So you have to respect that and then respect them and say, look, it's not working. See, everything can be said, but it's how you say it, isn't it? Everything can be said to the other, but you be in your swaman, your power, and then say it. The brother behind you? Yes. Thank you. Um, mainly, I wanted to ask about, um, you know, <clears throat> like you talked about in this particular example about the parking spot, right? You, I would think that, then again, I would go and doubt myself, <laughs> right? <laughs> and I've been struggling with that for a while, right? And yeah. I'm sure. So what if it doesn't happen? Yeah. So that's, that's one thing. And another aspect is about decision making we can try to shed some more light about decision-making. Okay, well, let's answer the first and then I'll get clarity on the second. You see, yeah, so obviously now with me, it's happened so many times that I know that it can happen. So experience is telling me it can happen. But you're right, maybe in the beginning you're not sure. So again, it goes back to the self, you see. Why should you? deserve a parking spot. You should feel yourself deserving of the parking spot. So one of the reasons I feel deserving is yes, because I'm using my time wisely. I have a lot to do. And so let me not waste the time in looking for the parking. Yeah. So things like this, you have to mostly these things will come back to the self. If I really respect my time and resources, then I will attract, you know, um, what I want. Even now, I was like four days in India, in Madhuban. I took somebody as a guest. Actually, he was an Arab uh, from one of the countries. So in that time, whilst escorting him, I was trying to do some of my things. And again, I'm putting out the thought, I need to meet that person. I need to give that one some money. I need to settle this. And honestly, it's like they just turn up or they, uh, there's somebody who's going to see them or so much of my time was saved. And this is the magic of this life. This is where you just are in wonderment that things can happen easily if you're in the right frame of mind. You know, if you're attracting and if you're in that good space, happy space deserving space, self-respect, then why things shouldn't happen? You know, even money. There's so much money in the world. Why isn't it coming to me? There's so much money. But you have to feel you deserve it. And to put it to a good use. Yes, get the money and then you can put it to a good use. Why you, sh why you shouldn't attract money? People, corporation, why somebody shouldn't help you? Yes, I deserve corporation. I need to get this done in a short time. So it all comes actually from Swaman. When you respect yourself, then you are deserving and you can attract very easily. And uh, decision making. Was there anything in particular? What did you mean, like how to make decisions? Uh, it's, it's again, uh, go, probably goes back to doubt. You make a decision oh, and okay. then uh, after making the decision, okay. uh, some new thoughts about or, or things start coming uh, as in maybe that's not the right decision and there's a logical reason why that's yeah. not the right decision yeah. after making the decision. Okay, yeah. So those kind of. So what I say for this is, because as you can see, like throughout my life, I've had to make many decisions. First, do I want to become a Brahma Kumari or not? That was a major decision. Then how do I want to live my BK life? Where, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So then you say to yourself, I can only make this 
decision knowing what I know now. And even, say, in a day's time, maybe you have some more information, but you still have to say to yourself, I could have only made that decision then, knowing what I knew then. And you, in a way, have to forgive yourself. I mean, if something goes different. But again, here, we don't believe anything goes wrong, you see? Nothing is wrong here. Not here, but in life, nothing is actually wrong. Everything is as it should be. So whatever, you, whatever decision you take will be the right decision. I think that's the faith you have to have. Whatever decision you take, it will be right for then. Then next day, day after, in one week's time, maybe you can fine-tune that decision, knowing what you know in a week's time then. So don't doubt, once you take a decision, this is going back to the sister's question, when you have a powerful thought and you put doubt in it, that's not powerful anymore. Once you have a thought, a thought is like a seed. And once the seed is planted, how can it not grow? Even if it's a weed, but it will grow. You see? So once you have a thought, it's done, it's a done deal. So it will reap something. Now it's up to you how, how to reap the best. So go with it, stay with it, you know? Um, there's a saying that, you know, we make a decision with our head. In other words, yes, use the head, but make sure you carry your heart with you. So head and the heart together making a decision is, I think, the best. Because then, again, it's the right brain, left brain, and um, it's a balanced decision. So what I do is I sit in meditation and I, I look at both. And somewhere they will meet, again, with some quality, like if the head is saying this, why? If you say why enough times, they will meet at a certain quality or an experience. And then you say, okay. So you have to first sit with it. I suggest if you are confused, you sit with it. Or even I would say, leave it overnight. And then next morning you'll be really sure, right? Like, yes, this is what I think I should do. Yeah. But taking a, a you know brash decision doesn't help. Um, because yeah, just just be patient and take your time, especially important decisions. Yeah, I'm not sure how much time we have. Can we continue? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sister. Uh, can you provide some suggestions and uh, strategies on how to deal with the inflow of negative thoughts in general and also specifically when uh, I sit for meditation? The reason I ask this is because uh, in the past when I sit for meditation and there is huge influx of negative thoughts, I was suggested that this is just a thought. It is your imagination. It is not reality. So that thought is powerless. So just ignore that. right? But And, and, the, and in fact that helped me. The moment I started believing that it's just a thought, it actually resulted in the cessation of the thoughts and then the inflow reduced. But now, if I go with this school of thought, that thoughts are really powerful, and the moment you think of anything, it's going to get manifested, I'm really scared. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't even want to sit for meditation because <laughs> I just avoid that, right? So what should I be doing here? Uh, can you provide some strategies on how to deal with the negative thoughts in specific? <laughs> Yeah, see, we can't just become numb out of fear. In fact, I think we should face our fears. Because our fears are nothing except like paper tigers. So when you really sit with your fear and go through it, even with your mind, like you visualize it, you find that it's not, not real. Yeah, it is a fact that, yes, every thought you create, you are planting something. 
But that should be a motivation to do good and not a stagnation, you see? And let me ask you, is there any good reason? Hmm? Any good reason why you should have a negative thought? Anyone? There's no good reason, right? There's no good reason to have a negative thought. So why are we having them? Yes. Mic, somebody gives the brother the mic. You're answering my question? Yeah, you, you were just saying, sister, that uh, why is that you're having a negative thought, right? So if, if you know, when we consider it, as, uh, we consider ourselves as self, and uh, we are, we play a micro role in any environment. There is a macro environment wherein many other minds are working around you, right? When you are working around with your thought, as far as your five P's are concerned, and when there is a negative energy is coming, I think you end up pick up that to, to, to basically fight out or maybe to prove that you know, survival is uh, uh, fittest of the survival. Okay, so uh, I think you end up picking it up with a reason. One moment, just hold the mic. Why is it that you pick up the negative? Why can they not pick up your positive? That's what, th this, is the, this is the very, very important thought that you as an individual play a micro role in the, in the larger environment, okay? If at all. Just by being positive. Right. I, I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree that, you mean I'm, I'm in minority, that's what you're saying. Uh, the positive thinkers are right. in minority, right, that's right. what you're saying, right? Right. Yeah. Right. But the, po the positive thought has ten times more power than the negative. So even though it's minority, but the thoughts are more powerful. So but they should be able to influence the negative. At situations, uh, situations are time bound. You are supposed to, you know, uh, achieve certain tasks within a time. So operationally, things are different than, you know, uh, theoretically is what. You mean your thoughts are not working fast enough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't agree because I have a lot of experience experimenting with thoughts, and all I can say to you is you have to experiment. Don't, don't say it doesn't work now. First experiment and then see. Yeah. See, how many of you have really experimented with lots of positive thoughts, powerful thoughts? Try it first. Yeah, it, it does work. Definitely, yes. That's why, you know, kind of uh, frequency, you know, uh, we are discussing in, right? But, you know, when your thought is being, when it is positive, which is being, you know, pushed back with negative thought, with more power, okay, that's when I think dynamics do change. No, but that's honestly, it just takes one positive thought. You know, if, if you're to change the world or all these great uh, leaders or, you know, inspiring people, they had one thought, Gandhi, you know Gandhi so well, he's your man. Gandhi said, I want to free myself from India, uh, from the British. One thought, and he kept empowering that thought. He just believed in it. That was one of the most impossible things that could happen. So when you have the thought, then you have to have the belief, then you have to have the conviction, then you have to keep watering it, like keep paying attention to it, believing in it. You see? Yeah. So it is possible, but it starts with just one thought. Okay, something practical in your lives. You say, you know, I want to lose weight. It's a powerful thought. No, I want to lose weight. But then you have to water that. Believe it. Believe I can. Believe it's possible. Every day, put in the effort. And you can make it happen. But it all starts with one thought. So anyway, going back to this brother's question about negative. See, 
uh, first of all, yeah, it, it, it's not that just when you sit in meditation you have to practice positive thinking. You have to practice this when you're not in meditation either. Because it's a, it's a chicken and egg thing. If I'm having positive thoughts in my day, then when I sit in meditation, automatically it will be positive. Or if I'm having negative, then when I sit in meditation, of course the first thought will be negative. So what I'm saying is, which comes first, meditation or the day, or creating the thoughts in the day? So it, you can start anywhere, either start in the day by creating positive, or start sitting meditation and then creating positive. But then make sure that it continues. Make sure it continues throughout the day. Even at night, when you go to sleep, your subconscious is, subconscious is ticking away. So at night, again, you know, if I were you, I'd create some five affirmations for yourself, your life, your health, um, your family, your work, whatever, whatever are your priorities, and create five strong sentences and say them to yourself every night before going to bed. And this will affect your subconscious. So then, gradually, you become a positive thinker. You know, not just in meditation. Meditation is not just a five-minute thing here. Meditation has to become a way of life. So my thinking becomes a way of life. I choose not to think negative. I choose to think positive. You know, even if somebody is insulting me, even if somebody is jealous of me, what can I do about that? Nothing. You know, it's them and their actions. I cannot do anything about it. Let me just create this aura, this shield of protection and stay within that and not be affected. Right? Again, it's in our Hindu religion. Jese karenge, vese paenge. As you sow, so shall you reap. So if they're sowing those seeds, why am I eating from their tree? No. Let me continue to keep doing the good. Let me continue to plant the good. So what I'm saying, your answer to your question, throughout the day, practice to have positive vision, take in positivity, think positive for the person. Try to, in your daytime stuff, just, you know, train your mind to see positive. If you wear sunglasses, what do you see? Yeah, dark, right? Whatever is the color of the glasses, you see. So wear the glasses of positivity. Don't take in this information unless it's positive. Because whatever goes inside, the thought automatically turns into a feeling. Okay, say I said something to you about Murti Bhai. You know, Murti Bhai is very lazy, you know. He doesn't, um, he doesn't do things on time. And Say I say this to you about him. When you meet him next time, what will be your vision? Exactly that. Kuch to jayenga na andar. Something of what I said will affect your drishti, your vision about him. So I don't want to hear the negative, I don't want to take it in, I don't want to ingest it. No. Even standing there listening is consent. No, I don't, I don't want to do that. So yeah, don't take it in, otherwise yes, it will come out. Then you meet him. Before he's opened his mouth, you will react and say, you know, because you know he's lazy or because you know he's like this. Already you formed an opinion. So really we have to be very careful, especially you all who are in positions of, you know, power and authority and responsible for other people. Somebody else in Chennai, I was just in Chennai and one leader was telling me, he said, he said, I can't say anything to my employees because if I do, they become so sensitive that then, you know, th then they don't do well. 
He goes, I'm trying to correct them so that they improve, but they get so stuck that I've said something that they can't improve. They're too busy trying to please me. I mean, can't be that sensitive. See lesson, Let see school as a, as, a, as a lesson of life and, you know, let me see what are the lessons coming my way and let me see everything as an opportunity for growth. So if somebody says something to me, I say, oh, okay, I'll have a look at that. Thank you. You know, not to get defensive and argumentative and... Okay. <laughs> There's one more question, okay. Last question here. <coughs> your example of Shapan the saw really stuck with me. So, is there any particular time and place you suggest <coughs> for a meditation or... Because most of the time, you know, it's... You don't get the time, as you, you also pointed out, do I have breakfast? Yes, but... You need to have a... <coughs> a peaceful mind and time if you want to sit for meditation. You really can't do it anywhere and anytime. So, what would you suggest uh, mm. for that? Mm. Well, the best we say is the early morning hours because what's happened is the body has rested and the mind has rested. And plus, you know, at five or six in the morning, even, okay, nowadays we bring our work home, right? With the cell phone and the moment we wake up, we start seeing the messages. So, again, you have to be mindful and maybe switch off the notifications or something. But early morning is best because even that time you try to call somebody and they're sleeping. So, you can't get certain things done anyway. So, that's the time to be with yourself. So, initially when you learn the lessons, maybe you can't come so early uh, to the center, but then start doing it at home, those early morning hours. They also say it's the Brahma Murat. Even the ozone is enriched at that time, if you take in the oxygen at that time. So it's good to be up and awake and, you know, um, just take in the air and then, yeah, your thoughts. Start working on your mind and the thoughts. And initially you can start for 15 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, then increase it, 20, 30. Some of us sit for one hour in the morning. We give that dose to ourselves, And then we start other things. We don't even talk in the morning, actually. I mean, everybody has that understanding. Nobody talks. It's time with yourself. And then six, seven, we have our morning class together and then after that we come into action and sound and so imagine like you know and now I feel like how can you not start your day with this how can you just wake up run to work with a toast in your mouth you know that's not also respect for the self you need to love and respect yourself you need to care for yourself by giving yourself that time. So I'll just end with a story and then we finish. Okay. So maybe some of you have heard this story, but it's nice and I think applicable. So there was one person and he went to his guru and he said, look, I want something that's going to really make me happy. You know, give me a lot of peace of mind, give, make me happy, give me a good life. He says, what can you give me that, you know, will give me a good contented life? So the guru says, I, I don't know. He said, what do you mean you don't know? You're the guru, no? Tell me, give me something, tell me something. So the guru says, okay, look, you see that tree over there? There is a diet. There's a stone over there, okay? 
So he goes, if you want the stone, you can take it. It's yours. So he goes to the tree and he finds that it's a diamond. It's a stone, but it's a diamond. It's this big. So he comes running back to the guru and he says, this is for me? And the guru says, yes, it's for you. He said, you sure? And he said, yeah, you can take it, have it. He said, this should make you happy. Okay, so he took the diamond and of course he's so happy that this is my diamond now. You know, I finally got what I wanted. But before he sets out to go, he has a look, you know, is anyone watching? And he thinks, oh, better hide it, you know, in case somebody steals it. And goes home. Before he enters the house, he says, oh, I can't tell my wife, you know, she gossips too much. So I better hide it from my wife. So he hides it from his wife and he finds some place, some corner. And he says, nobody should know it's here. Okay, so he hides it. The next day he goes to work, whatever is his job, whatever work. But while he's there, what is he thinking about? This diamond. I hope nobody steals the diamond. I hope my wife hasn't found the diamond. I hope the maid doesn't find it. So he becomes, what do we say, parishan, distressed, you know? Okay, next day, third day, fourth day, fifth, same thing, every day, stress. Every time he comes home, he checks, is it still there? Oh yeah, it's still there, okay. <sighs> okay, it's still there. But this got too much after some time. So he took the diamond back to the guru and said, here, <laughs> I was better off before. <laughs> I had more peace of mind before this. I don't need it. So the guru said, you can put it back there under the tree for the next person to learn their lesson. So mostly, right, when you get what you want, are you better off for it or are you more stressed? So why don't we start with the end in mind? Right? So the end is, I want to be peaceful and happy. So start with that. Start by being. See, normally our formula was what? You do, you have, and then you become. Hmm? So you all worked hard. You all got your whatever. BSc, MSc, PhD. You worked hard. Huh? You did. To have what? High profile jobs, a high salary, high status. Then now you should be happy. But what I'm saying is do it the other way. Be, then you will have, everything will come to you. Like you see, you see our places. Everybody thinks the Brahma Kumaris are so rich. We're not rich, but everything just comes to us. People want to help. So you be, you be happy, you be good, you do good, and things come to you, you have. And then you can do. In other words, we get this and then we do the service. So be, then you will have, and then you will do. Okay? It's a lovely meeting all of you. Thank you for making the time to be with us. And really, you should remember this event because this is the first event. So you will always be in the history of inner space. You made history today. Thank you, Om Shanti. Thank you so much for such an interactive Q&A. I was never expecting that we'll exceed the time. I'm very happy. This is the one time I'm happy to be exceeding the time. Okay, and we should clap for all the people who have raised the questions because it's not only helped them but all the other people who have not asked the questions. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, based on my experience, I would just like to take a few uh, words. That one meditation is not just uh, only the process of meditation, but the background that Brahma Kumaris brings to us in the form of knowledge. Okay, sitting for one hour. 30 minutes, 20 minutes is not only the thing. There is a lot of knowledge that uh, you acquire to sit like that. Okay? 
And afterwards, how do you use that one throughout the day? So as his sister told, it's not that being peaceful for 15 minutes or 30 minutes or one hour in the morning. That any way you can do, you can be peaceful because nobody calls you at morning 4 to 5. Okay? Nobody is available for you to disturb you. But the real uh, strength comes is that how do you get the energy and then that energy, like you're charging your mobile, all of us charge a mobile in the night, you know, to make it ready in the morning. If you miss that one, you will be under pressure actually, at least you get up in the morning and immediately you do that. So the meditation, uh, we, I'm practicing meditation from the last uh, 10 years, uh, out of that at least I can say 9 years. Uh, morning uh, 4 to 5. Okay, that's, that's the time to do the meditation. But uh, uh, telling from my experience that only meditation doesn't help. You need to acquire the knowledge. That's what we do every day. We listen to a process of uh, Murali, that what we call the message from God. It's a four page uh, lesson that comes every day. We listen to that. Why do we do that one is because that is actually channelizing our thought process. So how many of you actually read the newspaper as you get up in the morning immediately? I used to do that. Okay. After coming here, I decided that I will not read the newspaper till 8 o'clock in the morning. Nothing is going to fall down if I don't know the news up to 8 o'clock in the morning. So do the meditation from 4 to 5, then do your physical exercise because it's also important to have your physical fitness along with the uh, mental uh, soul peace. So you do that one. And then subsequently, you would listen to the murli. It hardly takes around half an hour. If you come to center, it may take one hour because there will be discussions and all. That is programming your mind. Being in IT industry, we know that when actually what you program, it's going to function. Okay? You can't get an instrument to function something which you have not programmed. So the morning message what we do, the meditation what we do is actually helping you to program your mind. With that programming, if you go to office as our friend saying that, okay, I prepared very well and go there, but by the time I will really be in operations and executing, that's where I lose. Yes, you lose it because you don't remember. So as keep on remembering the things, what is the process that you have started in the morning, what message I have received today. So to give you that, today in this process, uh, we are also going to give you a, a what do you, blessing card. Blessing card is a, a card given to every individual. Believe it, that's the blessing that has come from supreme power to you. You need to believe it. It's not just a card, okay? So what, when you do that, so we are going to give you uh, toli. Toli is the sweet, what we actually give it to the people when they meet, like, you know, exchange of sweetness. So all of you are going to receive the blessing card and the sweet uh, to, uh, to, you know, taste the sweetness of this one on a continuous basis. And I request uh, each one of you to taste it at least, okay? If you don't taste, uh, then there is no value of this one. So do the program, do a course of five days, what they do for one hour every day. It's not more than an hour a day. And if you can't spare one hour a day for five days, then I think you should think about it whether it deserve peace or not, okay? So she was telling that one, first you need to believe yourself, I deserve it. Okay? Believe that you deserve it, you do it, you learn, and then not only meditation, but the knowledge is the only important thing, uh, aspect uh, that binds you or holds your thoughts, as Sister rightly told. You may do excellent meditation in the morning, but if you don't hold your thoughts with the knowledge, I think you will fall back. Thank you so much for the opportunity given to Brahma Kumaris with your uh, presence here. And then now I request uh, Sister Shivani. Maybe, maybe we just have a moment of silence? Yeah, okay. Yeah. So again, just settle down and um, just one minute, literally one minute, and just bring yourself back to an inner calm, inner peace. And in this moment, I would like you to sow a seed. So decide what it is that you would like more of in your life. And just sow that seed now with a powerful thought.
every day just nurture that seed with the water of attention and with God's light. You all know that we have a session of Sister Aruna once again tomorrow morning from 10 to 1 o'clock. This is open to all working IT professionals in our big auditorium. So you're welcome to join us once again on the theme Respect, Resonate and Respond. So you may join us plus you can uh, very well inspire people in your organizations also to take benefit. There is a flyer of the of tomorrow's program in your folder. You can have a look at it. More details you'll find in the flyer. So these SIT retreats are regular features of Shanti Sarovar. Every second Saturday of the month, we invite IT professionals for a half a day retreat, 10 to 1 o'clock. And it's been seven years in this journey. And uh, thousands of IT professionals have benefited so far. You're, you're welcome to uh, inform them also about these SIT retreats and this tomorrow's edition would be the seventh anniversary celebration of these SIT retreats. We pa we're partnering with the government IT department, with the HICIA, with STPI and T-Hub and collectively we have been hosting these programs for the past seven years and I really look forward to welcome you all once again tomorrow morning. Do share your valuable feedback and then once you're done with it, I invite you to step forward to come down and take the toli as we call it or the prasad which is prepared with a lot of love and feel the vibrations of peace and love when you enjoy this sweet and you will be given a, a blessing card which is a, a small card with a unique blessing written on it. It's different for everybody. So it, take it as a blessing from the Almighty and use that as a, as a blessing more often in your dealings and see the power behind it. You can preserve that card with you and I'm sure you all are having a wonderful time. Do enjoy yourself with the lunch as well and hope to see you soon again. Thank you. <laughs>